Hello everyone, this is my first attempt at recording a demonstration, so forgive me if anything seems a little bit awkward. <laughs> first off, I wanted to talk about what tools you'll need. So, on your supply list that I gave you guys, it says that you need a pair of angle cutters. These are angle cutters. And then needle nose pliers. They come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. This is a jewelry set that I have, so they're maybe a little bit more delicate than ones that you might find in the store, but they'll all work just fine. The jewelry ones don't have any teeth on them, so that helps to keep from getting nicks in your wire. These are flat-nosed ones, good for pinching, and these are round-nosed ones. So if you want to make lots of little loops, they're fantastic for that. And jewelry pliers really aren't all that expensive. You'll also need wire. If you happen to be in Savannah at Ex Libris, this is the wire that they sell. It is aluminum wire. It calls itself sculpting and armature wire. This is the medium gauge. They also sell a heavier gauge. These two gauges will be pretty much what you need for this project. This is some wire that a student left me in the past. It's the same gauge as the one from Ex Libris, but it happened to be purchased at Utrecht. So if you're not in Savannah and you have a Utrecht around, they have wire there too. Something that wasn't on your supply list, but which can be really handy, is a finer gauge wire. This is very skinny wire. It's great for joining the heavier gauge wires together. This came from Ex Libris, but they sell it at any supply store. It is galvanized steel and not aluminum. When it's super skinny, they just don't make aluminum wire that skinny. Thicker wire, when you use galvanized steel, it's very hard to work with, which is why I recommended aluminum. Copper works too, but for the skinny wire you want galvanized steel. So to start out, I created myself a couple of cardboard templates. This is a fish, keeping with the deep blue sea theme. And so that's a profile of the fish. I also created a cardboard form for the volume of the fish. And you're going to see why I did this in a second. So to start off with cutting the wire, the super skinny wire actually comes with a tool to cut it. So if you happen to buy this brand of wire, this is how this cutter works. You just put the wire through that little metal thingy and push down and get it in the right spot. Push down and it cuts it away. For the thicker wire, that's where you need the angle cutters. They very nicely gone and made these packages so that you can store stuff in them easily. So, as you can see, this wire bends very easily. And I'm going to cut off a length of it. And this is where the angle cutters come in handy. Now a lot of needle nose pliers come with a little cutter on them. In my experience, students who decided to just go with that cutter have gone a little crazy trying to get the wire cut because it just doesn't work as well as the angle cutter. So it's worth the investment to get those. Now you'll notice when the wire comes off the spool, especially in the middle of the spool, it's not very straight. Easiest way I know to straighten it out is to take it over the edge of a table and just run it along like this. Ta-da! Straight wire. So for this skinnier wire, that works great. Unfortunately, the bigger wire, you're just going to have to fuss with it with your pliers until it gets straight. So. These cardboard templates that I made are what are called jigs, and you can use all kinds of things for jigs as well as cardboard. So say I wanted to make a whole bunch of perfect circles, this is an old yogurt cup. I could take the wire and bend it around. And now I've got a pretty nice circle, not quite perfect. But like I said, you can fuss with the wire to get it right. 
So now I've got a circle. Now you've got this place where the wires overlap. You could twist these wires together to join them. But that leaves kind of an awkward looking joint. So that's why I had that skinnier wire. So I'm going to straighten this out. And then if you line them up on top of each other, you can take your piece of skinnier wire and use it to wrap the joint. So I'm going to take this, overlapping it a little bit so that it ties itself off. And then I'm just going to start wrapping. The tighter you wrap it, the better a joint it will be. You may want to use your pliers to pull it. Just to get it nice and tight. And you can see that makes a neater looking joint. than what I had before. So that's one approach to joining the wires. Another approach that some students have taken in the past is to use silver insulating tape. So it's tape that's used for heating ducts and it's a shiny silver or any kind of shiny silver mylar tape can look good doing this. Unfortunately glue doesn't work very well for this. You need to get Glue that works with metal and glue that works with metal tends to be thick and gloppy. Hot glue definitely doesn't work. Um, super glue doesn't work very well. So probably just best to stay away from glue trying to get these joints together. And then students always want to solder. Unfortunately, you can't solder aluminum. If you get galvanized steel, I believe you can solder that, although I may be wrong. So don't quote me on that but soldering probably isn't the solution either. So binding together with wire or tape is probably your best bet. So let's look at this fish again. To approach this fish, it is currently two-dimensional. I need to make it three-dimensional. So the reason that I made this template was so that I could create shapes like this. So now I have sort of the three-dimensional shape of the body of the fish. So imagine these going this way around the cardboard template. So you can see how it becomes three-dimensional. I'm not going to build this entire fish for you, but just to give you an idea of how I was planning on approaching this, I would bring a wire from here to here. I would outline this with wire, and these would be the primary contours. So I would use this thicker wire to do that. And then I have lines going this way, that would be these shapes. So that's how I tried to make it three-dimensional. I would join this wire to the wire going along here. I would, actually I should say along here. This would be an extra wire added on with wires coming up to create the texture of the fin. I could add on a wire here to show the gill, a wire here to show the fin, etc. So hopefully this will help you in creating your wire sculpture. If you have any questions, please email me. Thank you!